some some tips I have for power users right now. Um, it's some tools that power has that uh, that you might not be aware of that can really help you find find the, those good paying loads by finding areas where you know that your truck and your services will be in demand. And that's really, so it's not just about doing a search in DAT power, but it's, it's about knowing where to do the search and where to position your truck. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to search loads here, um, just like you guys would. And we'll just do a typical old load search here just to see what kind of loads we have. And then I'm going to introduce some tools to you. So just typical old like flatbed search for maybe Atlanta and we'll go to, uh, how about we go to zone seven so we can stay in that area. And uh, we'll go ahead and put in a length and weight on our, our flatbed here. That's a little too much, but about 53, about 45,000 pounds here. And when you run this search, you're going to see the DAT will bring you back some results, but we're also going to give you these tools up here that I really kind of want to go over with you guys again, because they're, they're a little small up here. You may not notice them or you may click on them and not, not quite understand how they work or what they're trying to tell you. Okay. So, so uh, going into market conditions here, this is going to, this is a great tool for carriers because it's going to really show you guys where you're going to be in demand. These are going to be areas where, you know, there's few trucks, there's lots of loads. So brokers are beating each other up, trying to find the best truck out there. And, and hopefully in that process, you guys are driving up that rate since you are in demand. So uh, uh, market conditions gives you two looks here of the, of the U.S., an, an outbound look and an inbound look. And for your guys' purposes, we're going to focus on the outbound. Um, this is a heat map, you guys, a uh, heat map of the uni entire United States, and it's based off of flatbeds right now. And I'm going to look at the prior business day here just to kind of get an idea of what the U.S. looks like as far as, as uh, capacity goes. What you guys are looking at here is red is hot. Red is really hot. And it, what that means is carriers are in demand. All these little red markets you guys are looking at, these are places where carriers are going to get some good results because you're in demand. You know, brokers know it. They know there's very few trucks here. They know that they're going to when they find one that they're probably going to have to pay higher than the going rate. So just to give you an example of what this looks like, I'm going to click on this little market down here. Um, which happens to be the Fresno market. And I can zoom in a little bit on Fresno. Kind of center it there. All right. So what why DAT thinks and knows this is a hot market for carriers is because of the, the data that we're showing over here. It's our load to truck ratio specifically. You can see that for every uh, for right now, for every 10 loads there are in that Fresno market, there's only one truck. Oh, wow. And we and we and we have that based off the actual numbers of 701 load postings to 68 truck postings. Hmm. And when you look at a market like that, you you know that if you're tr if you're in California right now, you're looking for a load in Fresno, you're gonna find one. They're out there. And when you get that broker on the phone and they say, "Yeah, I'll pay you 350," that's when you're saying, "Well, you know, I'm kind of in demand here. How about 550? Or how about five? You know, you're driving <laughs> that rate up, and you're really trying to." Um, to, to show that, hey, I'm in demand. I'm going to make the money I deserve because of it. Okay. And, and so you can do that. Uh, um, you can look at the market, uh, any market you want in here and assess how it's going to work out for you. I, I know a, uh, another use case for this that carriers tell me quite often is they'll use this map to decide whether they want to go to an area or not. You know, for instance, if a broker says, hey, you know, hey, Mike, I got this hot load going to Miami. Are you interested? Well, before I say yes to that, you know, I kind of want to look at what the Miami market looks like. Hmm. And when I see when I see how blue it is, how cold it is for me, I don't necessarily want to end up in Miami. You know, it's going to yeah. if I go there, I'm going to be in a black hole and I'm going to have to probably drive a couple hundred miles just to find a load. And I don't want to burn all that gas. So, Empty. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't want a deadhead. So so <laughs> yeah, so I'm not going to necessarily say no to that broker. But this kind of information is powerful, you know, yes. for a broker who's saying, hey, I want to send you to Miami, Florida, I'll pay three bucks a mile. It's like, well, <laughs> you know, I would go there for you. But man, when I get there, 
I'm going to, I'm going to not be able to find a load. So I'm going to have to make more on the front end if you want me to go there. And again, it's a way for you to drive up that rate, you know, because the brokers, the broker knows that you have that they're sending you to this black hole of loads. So okay. drive up that rate when you see these blue markets that these brokers are trying to send you to. Hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the first tips is, is start using this market conditions, uh, this market conditions map here. And that's going to really help you identify those great areas. Michael, is this uh, market conditions, it's um, additional um, pay, meaning is it the like uh, subscription level or it comes with the DAT power? That's a great question. It's actually market conditions here is available for all power users. So oh, uh, okay. yeah, our, our carriers, our brokers all have access to this at every price point for DAT power. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So that's one thing to get that's going to help you guys out in finding those those better paying loads, because um, not all, you know, if you if you're trying to go to one of these blue areas and you're right there looking for a load, you're not going to expect to make a lot. Brokers mm -hmm. know that they, you know, carriers in these areas are desperate. So they're paying those desperate prices. Right. Those ones that they know that they can kind of lowball you because, you know, you're desperate mm -hmm. and you need that load. Right. So if I'm if I'm in Florida, as you mentioned, so there is a Miami, it's like blue, then I can drive a couple hundred miles um, and then there's a red zone. So basically moving from blue zone to red zone and then there is the demand for it. Yes. Yeah. So the difference, I mean, compared to Miami market to the market right above it. And you can see just how many more loads there are. So Miami, you're looking at 451 loads as of yesterday. Mm -hmm. You go right up into the market right above that. That would be the Lakeland market. And there's 3,000 loads. So, mm -hmm. you know, Miami, you wouldn't have to drive that far right now to get into an area where you're really going to be in demand. So Florida, <laughs> Florida doesn't traditionally look very good when it comes yes. to loads. But right now you can see that part of Florida is really hot, especially because we're looking at flatbeds. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, for vans, it might not be so beautiful <laughs> in Florida. So, yeah, there there you go. Go. <laughs> so you look at Florida for vans and it's ice cold and, and much of the nation is, you know, mm -hmm. the, there's some pockets of these really hot areas like Texas right now for vans that that's has a lot of volume there. But uh, you can see a lot of the United States is really cold and not very favorable to carriers right now that have vans equipment types. Michael, why is that? Is it like because there are a lot of, you know, drive in owners? Is that the case? Because I think, in my opinion, like majority of the trucking companies, like they are vans, like about maybe I don't know if I'm guess if I'm guessing maybe 80 percent. This is what I see on the road. Yeah, I, I I see the same thing. So it's it, it makes it a little hard to explain why the why the uh, why it's so cold out there. But I also know that a lot of vans have parked recently just because of the the fuel prices have been so expensive. Right. So uh, hopefully the with the fuel coming down, we'll see more vans entering entering the marketplace. But yeah, vans right now are just not in demand, and it might just be because of a you know a surplus of them out there mm -hmm. right now. Okay, awesome. So this is one of the futures um, using the DAT power load board. Like, can you share like any other features? Yeah, there's another a, a couple more tools that I, I'd love to share with you. The the lane makers tool is another one. Um, I often, you know, I've heard before from customers that it's like, hey, there's just you know some areas that I cannot find anything in. You know, mm -hmm. I'll look, but I'll look six, six six different ways, and I won't find the the, the loads I'm looking for. And so there's a tool out there. And this one, in case you were going to ask, is not available for all power users. It is available for our power office subscription on up. Mm. And that tool is called uh, is called um, uh, Lane Makers. And so what you're looking at with Lane Makers is Lane Makers really is, is, is a tool meant for you to find business partners out there. So as a carrier, you guys are looking for brokers. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to show you with this, with lane makers is you type in a lane that you're interested in. So for instance, we'll go back to the flatbed from Atlanta. Maybe you, you, you're working the, you're trying to work the Atlanta to Houston lane. Mm -hmm. You come in here and you put in your lane for Atlanta to Houston. And we're going to show you some companies that we think would be a good business partner for you. 
Now, it doesn't mean they have any loads right now necessarily, but it does, uh, based on their previous activity, these are people we feel like might be good matches for you. So mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, for instance, this company you're seeing right here on my screen, D and L Transport LLC, we think they'd be a good business partner for you because in the last 30 days, they've posted 1,745 loads from Atlanta, Georgia to Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. So if you were that flatbed driver and you're struggling to find loads in this lane, this is a company you want to get out in front of. This is somebody you want to contact and say, listen, I'm a driver. I'm in Atlanta going to Houston. Maybe you're doing that lane quite often. Introduce yourself to this broker. Get on their radar. Become part of their private network so they can start sending you these loads directly to you. And that's going to be key here. So like lane makers, I always tell people it's a great way of, of adding business partners in lanes that you're just not very familiar with. Wow. Well, I, this is awesome. Michael, you wow. mentioned something very, very important. And you said private network for the brokers. And I yeah. did a live stream about like two weeks ago. And I talked about this. Can you talk about this like private network for the brokers? And what are the advantages? Yeah, well, private networks is something brokers have been asking us for for a while. And so that's something that we're that we've recently implemented into our uh, into our load board. Um, private. The idea of a private network is to instead of sending a load out to the entire database of all the carriers out there that subscribe to DAT, brokers have asked to be able to send postings directly to a list of carriers that that they are um, associated with or that they've mm -hmm. done business with in the past. Uh, they've they've asked to be able to set up their own network that they can send postings to without sending them to the DAT masses. Hmm. And so uh, private net, what's happening right now is, is a lot of brokers are creating these private networks and they're sending these loads directly out to these carriers. And the carriers are able to log in to our, our newest website that we're, um, that we're coming out with DAT1. They're able to log into that and they can actually book those loads online without a phone call. Um, the rate is listed on those loads so they can see exactly what they're getting into before before uh, accepting that that um, load from the broker. Mm -hmm. and, and if the broker allows it, the carrier can even bid. You know, so if the broker says, hey, I'll pay you fifteen hundred, the carrier can actually send a bid back and say, I'll do it for seventeen hundred. And okay. the broker and you can negotiate back and forth until you guys land on a, on a cost that you're both comfortable with. And then again, you're booking that load completely online without, without actually ever getting that broker on the phone call. Okay. Michael, can you do a little bit of a demo on how to not to call and book a load? Absolutely. That's just going to take me one moment to get set up here. Um, but what okay. I'll do here is I'll, I'll try to split screens the stuff for us so you, we can see what a broker will look like and what a carrier will look like. So okay. give me one second and I'm going to go into our test environment. Uh, so I'm, you know, I don't want to put anything in our real environment right now. So just give me one second to log in to both of these sites. Okay, awesome. And again, guys, you, you guys are watching this, please, if you have questions. And, and uh, do you see, let me pull this, Abdul Hakim says, um, pleasure to be here. Awesome. I have some questions to ask if you would allow me to. Absolutely. So if you have questions, please ask, and then we'll just display your question, you know, like, like this, and then we'll ask question to a Michael and then he will do uh, his best to, you know, explain, um, or answer the question. So let's come back and see where you're at. So you're still pulling it. Um, yeah, here we go. Okay, awesome. All right. So what you're looking at, uh, I know my screen's a little cluttered right now, but try to vision on the uh, envision on the left hand side, you're looking at the broker view of our newest website, DAT1. Okay. On the right hand side, you're looking at what the carrier sees on DAT1. So I'm going to go through the motions of a broker actually sending a load to a private network. And, and hopefully if I've set things up right, the carrier will receive that that um, that posting and be able to book or bid on it. Oh. So how I'm going to do that is as a broker over here, I'm just going to go to my shipments and I'm going to create a new shipment. And so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create that new posting. And now you'll see what's different for brokers is they always in the past just posted to the DAT load board for all mm. carriers to see. What they can do now is they can post to either a private network or the load board or both. And so for this one, I'm just gonna post to the private network. I have a bunch of carriers set up on my network right now, about 20 of them, and I'm gonna post it, this load to them. And so I put in my, my information for that load. 
man, I put my earliest pickup. I put my, my, maybe I'm putting my, if I'm a cool broker, <laughs> I, I wish more did this, but they, I wish they would put in their pickup hours and their drop off hours to give the carriers more details. We do always encourage brokers to be as detailed as possible on their postings. Um, so I got this put in here and, uh, and now I select what phone number I might be wanted to uh, might want to call on. But here's where I'm actually going to say, you know what? Instead of a phone call, how about I let those carriers book that online without talking to me or even bid on it? And so by making those two selections right there, all I have to do now is and you'll see we are forcing we are requiring the brokers to actually put a rate on these postings. I know some I know carriers. I've talked to a bunch of them. I know mm. that's one of the biggest pet peeves is when brokers don't list what the offer rate is and it forces you to call just to find out. Yes. So with this private network, that's not a problem. The rate is is required for them. So mm. we try to put it just for, for your guys' sakes, carriers. Carriers. <laughs> We're putting the market rates, the going market rates right now, right next to this. So what this means is we know that in the last uh, 90 days here, that the going rate from, uh, I think it was Houston to Atlanta that I put in there. Yeah, Houston to Atlanta is uh, $2,384, a low of 2067 a high of 2645 That is what carriers have been making in the last uh, 90 days. Mm -hmm. So brokers see this when they decide to put what the rate is. You know, and most bro most brokers are going to be like, uh, 2300 I'll put it out there for 2000 You know, expecting that you probably are going to want to negotiate this rate up a little bit. Yeah. So they'll, they'll put that rate in there and then that's it. They'll just hit the post button. And if I did things right, I think I did here because the carrier over here just got notified that there a new private load just showed up. And so when that happens, you uh, the carrier will just click on view and they'll see this private load pop up. There it is, wow. Houston to Atlanta. And when they click on it, they will have they'll see all the details that the broker provided. They'll see what the going rate is. They'll see what the broker's trying to get away with. Oh. And at this point, they can come down here and they can actually send the booking request and say, yeah, I'm cool with $2,000. Or they can actually place a bid. And this is where they can come back and say, I hear you want to pay $2,000, but I'll do this for $2,500. How about at that, that point, yeah, at that point, the carrier places the bid and the broker will be notified. There it is on the left-hand side. You can see that the broker has been notified of that. The broker will then go view that and see what the bid amount was and decide whether to accept it or reject it. So the, the broker sees twenty five hundred dollars. They maybe they're like, yeah, you know, I'm cool with that. And they come in here and hit yes. And that now they're reminded that they have to send the rate confirmation over to you. But you as the carrier have been notified that your shipment is booked. You have booked this and now you're just waiting for the carrier to email you over a rate confirmation. Wow. How about that? Yeah, all of that without a phone call. And that's uh, that's that's what we've been asked to do over the, the last few years is is let's let's make freight matching easier. Let's make it to where I don't have to pick up the phone and and call for details that I should already have. Uh, what we're doing here is hopefully providing the carriers with all the details they need to make a, a, a decision on whether they want that load or not and then not have to pick up the phone call. Just, you know, let's just book it right now or let's just tell the, the broker I'm interested in it right here over the Internet instead. Wow. Michael, I think this is awesome. And I do see power of, you know, using this. What, well, I have a scenario like imagine I have one of my best friends. He's next door. He has 25 you know, trucks in the flatbed market. And then I worked with this broker in the past. But I think it's a disadvantage for him. You know, the guy posts, meaning broker posts a load. I get notified. But this guy next to me, he's not. Oh, that's the, that's the private network. Uh, brokers decide which carriers want to be on that private network. And they and ones that they don't necessarily know or don't want to do business with, they will leave them off that private network. Wow. Um, we do encourage carriers to, now that this is out there, and all brokers, every one of them that has our, uh, a subscription to us, has access to this tool and uh, can use it right now. So if, the, if there was a broker out there that you guys work with or, or would like to work with, get them on the phone. Tell them about this private network and have them add your contact, your carrier information to their private network so you can start receiving loads from them as well. Oh, wow.
Wow, that's awesome. So can we talk about a little bit of a try haul? I know we you yeah. mentioned about this try haul, you know, that will be awesome. So this is a very, very cool feature. So it's available now or is it in beta? No, try haul is available right now, has been for a while. And uh, this is something that I absolutely love going over with carriers because when I talk to a carrier about power or, or some of our other load boards, what I find out is very few of them know about this feature. Yes. And, and, and the reason why I've, I've narrowed it down, I figured out why carriers don't necessarily know about this feature. And it's all about the way that carriers typically search. You guys search like I just search. I searched Atlanta to an area. Now you guys might leave the destination blank quite often, right? Just, I want to know all the loads in Atlanta. I'll decide where I want to go. Right. Well, if you're doing searches like that, the try haul option never even appears for you. Try haul requires an origin and a destination both to have a city in it. City. So if you let me come on, let me let me set the stage uh, for you on this. Sure. How a carrier would actually use this. Cool. You know, if, if I'm a if I'm a carrier and I just dropped off a load in Atlanta and I'm trying to get home to Houston. You know, it's a typical scenario. You drop off a load. You want to go back home. You want to find a load going back home. Well, instead of doing that search from Atlanta to anywhere, do that search from Atlanta to Houston. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to edit my search here. Okay. And I'm going to do a search for uh, from Atlanta to Houston, Texas. And maybe I'll do vans instead of flats this time. So they flat last time. And so I have that Atlanta to Houston in there just trying to get home and I do a search and I get no results on that one. I get a lot of similar results, but I've got no exact results, unfortunately. But you still see this little option pop up right here. Mm -hmm. See, this this does not appear for you unless you put a city in city in here. And that's that's the biggest reason why carriers are unaware of this particular tool. So the point is when I click on it, you're going to see some areas. Whoa, what happened there? I got to the wrong page. I don't know what I clicked on there. <laughs> one second, guys. Okay. Try that one more time. It's taking me to the wrong. Oh, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. Okay. So this is uh, uh, the whole idea of this was if I wanted to get a load from, from Atlanta to Houston, I know that loads right now are paying about $1,700 uh, if I was to find a full load that went all the way from Atlanta to Houston. What DAT is able to do, though, is we're able to show you higher paying routes. And so, for instance, instead of taking one load from Atlanta to Houston, mm -hmm. how about you find a load from Atlanta to Bowling Green, Kentucky, where we know that you can make, on average, $842. Hmm. You, now, you drop off that load in Bowling Green, Kentucky, you find another load there in Kentucky going to all the way to Houston, where you can make another $1,500. So what we're saying is instead of taking one straight through full load, you're doing two, but you're, you're routing through a city that's paying really good. And so your $1,700 single trip from Houston or from Atlanta to Houston now becomes $3,000 you've made. And all you had to do was drive through Kentucky on your way home. Now, granted, that's going to add a few miles to your trip. You know, about 800 miles straight through, about 1,100 miles by routing through Kentucky. Hmm. But for $1,300 more, is 300, you know, 400 miles worth it? Absolutely. And I would say for a lot of carriers, absolutely. And if you're not interested in Bowling Green, we're going to give you up to five choices you can use as cities that you can route through that can make you a lot more money than just driving one straight through load. Oh, that's a try haul. The, the name comes from it's a try, basically like three dots connecting like from Atlanta to Kentucky or Bowling Green and yeah. then, you know, get the load and deliver it in Houston, Texas. Yeah, it's triangle routing. You know, that's where we yep. came up with the name of, of try haul. It's really the triangle, those three dots that you're describing there. And so, th yeah, this tool is out there right now for every single user of power. So it doesn't matter what package you're on. You just need to do that city to city search and we will give you this sort of information. Now, I, I want to give you one more tip here because I, I, I do hear this a lot. It's like, well, what do I do next? You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're giving me this idea. What do I have to do next? Well, now you have to do some legwork. You know, now you actually have to like, OK, well, knowing that I can go through Texarkana, Texas and make that much money. Now you have to find a load from uh, from Atlanta to Texarkana. 
Hmm. And once you get to Texarkana and drop off, you have to find another load from there going to Houston. So we're we're giving you the suggestion, but we're putting that uh, the legwork uh, of having to do those searches and identify those loads. It is on uh, back on the user there. But uh, that's something that we're committed to actually improving um, is, you know, I could envision at some point, you know, if we're giving you Texarkana as a suggestion, then we give you a, like a little link here that says here's eight loads from from Atlanta to Texarkana. And oh, you wow. can actually sift through those without having to go do the search yourself. That's the, the, the next step in the, the evolution of tri -Hall. Well, that would be awesome. So I think we have a quick question um, here. I think that is for not calling the brokers. Um, let yeah. me see. I think we had, there you go. So we have this question real quick. How do we have the broker add us to their private list? Great question. Right now, it takes a phone call. Uh, in this case, it's going to you're have to, you'll have to reach out to a broker that uh, and, and ask them through email, ask them over the phone to add you to the private network. So that's the only way they would know to add you is if you reached out directly and, and, and asked them to. Awesome. So I don't know if this is possible. Lindsay says, um, how can you book lows for hot shots without trailers? So I, let me see if I understand this correctly. Lindsay, are you asking how you could book a load when you're just the tractor and you don't have a trailer behind you? I think that that's the question, I think, yeah. Well, in our system, we call those power onlys. And so the, the only way to find those, if you're just the truck and you don't have the trailer, then what you're searching for in, in power would be a power only. And to get there, to be able to find a power only, you would have to change your search type um, from from any to only okay. and once you choose to only you see that there's a lot more selections here and you can at that point you'll see power only on the list and that'll allow you to search for those uh, the trailer um and uh, not necessarily the uh, the load itself yeah and from there i think more of a like hey i'm looking for something like less than twenty thousand pounds or thirty thousand pounds something like that um, so the power only for the hot shots, it means, you know, th those hot shots we have is like, you know, Dodge Ram, you know, pulling these, you know, not the 53 trailers. I think that Lindsay trying to ask that question, but I think she is typing. Let's see. So w while we're waiting on Lindsay, I think this question from David, um, what is the best way to know how to find where a carrier typically travels to or area they wanted to work with in the beginning? Yeah. Would we just ask them at the initial conversation? That, that, that Well, that's one way. But we also have a tool called our DAT directory that carriers can fill out that, that will indicate what their preferences are. So, for instance, if I, I'm going to switch things up and I'm going to find a carrier because I'm, I'm right now I'm looking for loads. So let me find Let me do a truck search real quick okay. just to get some carriers pulled up in front of you guys. I'll just do a quick search here and get, uh, get a carrier and click on them. Clicking on a carrier's name in DAT Power will allow you to go to more at DAT directory. And this is where you're going to see um, uh, if the carriers filled it out at the very bottom of this page, you're going to see the carrier self profile. And here you go. So all this information below is information the carrier filled out on themselves. And you'll see that they, they indicate things like they have straps or tarps or chains. But if you keep going down, they actually tell you what operating states they prefer to work in. Hmm. And so this carrier, this carrier basically said everywhere except for, well, apparently New Mexico is the only <laughs> one place that it, they don't want to go uh, outside of Hawaii. But but carriers, this is where you're going to see what what um, areas carriers are comfortable working in, what areas that they just refuse to. OK, awesome. So David says, thank you. Uh, yeah. You're welcome. Absolutely. So we have another question here. I think this is, um, um, there you go. What about this one? Uh, Facebook user says, how can we negotiate over bidding? Meaning negotiation. I think we j just, yeah, we did a, de you know, demo. Um, I think what will happen is that when we post this live, so you will just go back and watch. Uh, Michael did show us how to, you know, uh, negotiate. Uh, like, how can we convince brokers to pay us more as we do when we call them? We use different negotiation tactics. Uh, like how, uh, well, the, 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 the best way is to have your, um, you know, 
have your ducks in a row, I should say, is know what the market looks like in that area. Um, as I was showing earlier with market conditions is you can convince a broker to pay you more if you demonstrate to them that they're sending you to a place that is is not good for carriers, you know, that you're not going to make very much money in or that you're going to have to deadhead hundreds of miles to actually find business, you know, mm -hmm. showing a broker that that's where you're trying to send me right now can get them to drive that price up a little higher. So my tip for that is, yes, definitely use market conditions to know the areas, what you're getting into before you go there. Hmm. Okay. So I think the question was, it's, it's, it's like, you know, when I call, I have more power of talking to them than, you know, hearing me and I have some tactics. Um, for example, I do teach inside the training saying, hey, there should be a hook, reason, offer without any, you know, reason why you're asking for, you know, whatever, 2,500, that was the, yeah. uh, you know, example. But instead of that, you're just pulling a, hey, I need 2,500. It's yeah. not convincible, I think. That no, the no, it, but uh, the one thing I did not demonstrate is you're uh, you're actually able to add notes. So you can add notes and, and that's, that's never going to be as good as actually talking to somebody, right? I mean, I think we all could agree you're, uh, a phone conversation, you're going to have probably more power to negotiate. But uh but you can still have a mock conversation of some source by by texting why you know I want twenty five hundred because Miami, Florida is a dead zone, or I want twenty five hundred because X Y Z. You know, so you can put that in your note to, to kind of explain the bid that you're putting out there. Um, and, and a broker can do the same thing. They can reject it and say, "This is why I'm rejecting it. I, mm. I would have done twenty four, but you said twenty five. You know, so that there is still some room to negotiate by using those notes as you're bidding uh, back and forth. Yeah. And my thoughts on this, I think, and that's the name. It's a private network, right? So that means broker worked in the past with this carrier um, and carrier worked in the past with this broker. They know each other. They know the numbers already. Um, so I think that it wouldn't be in any issue to negotiate. Hey, this is a Prime Express LLC out of Atlanta, Georgia. This is Kamal. Hey, Mike. Hey, Richard, whatever. And then, hey, can you do, instead of, you know, 2,000, can you do 2,500? I think, you know, that that's the name. It's a private, right? So they kind of, um, you know, assigning lows internally. Yeah. So that, my thoughts. Uh, and let me see. I think this one, Milos, uh, is the market going more down or going to recover soon? Well, let me give you a, like a, let's look at an insight here. Let's, uh, we can look at a specific area. I'll use one of the tools that I have at my disposal over here called RateCast. RateCast actually is a prediction model DAT uses for rates. Um, so for instance, I have like for a, a reefer from Portland, Oregon, a Little Rock. I can show you based on this that uh, the rates in that area are going up. Um, mm. we're, we're predicting and they'll go up and they'll peak out in November go down a little bit, peak out in January again, and then kind of flatten out there for the rest of the year. Huh. Um, so we're able to look at this. And I, I can tell you, um, uh, based on all the lanes I've been looking at and training lately, is rates are, are starting to come down. Um, fuel pricing obviously is coming down, but rates are coming down and not necessarily as a result of fuel coming down. So it looks like rates are dipping back down to their pre-pandemic level. Um, I know they kind of peaked out there for a while and it was it was hard to use our history to try to figure out what a rate was going to be next year based on last year because it was just yes. all over but our model here i can i can share with you guys that the the range that we're showing of rates is 95 percent accurate so when we you know if i say the rate's going to be a, a uh, on April 9th, a buck 53 with a high of a buck 98 with a high, a low of a buck 14. When we get to April and we, and we double check ourselves, 95% of the time we are in this range that we're displaying here. Hmm. So it's a good indicator that uh, it's, it's kind of tough. It's a, uh, it's good news, bad news. It, it looks like inflation is coming down as a result. You know, that's a good thing, but it also, the bad thing is it looks like carriers are making less as a result as well. So it, it, you know, I guess it's all about perspective, but I understand that when rates go down, that that's definitely a big hit on carriers. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a question from Bogdan. He says how to find out what broker have a private network. Well, all uh, all brokers have the ability to have a private network. Um, some of them don't haven't created one yet. Some mm -hmm. of them don't even realize they have that capability, but a large portion of them do now. Um, even more, more and more will because DAT power is going to go away. 
Um, DAT one, what I was showing you earlier, will take over at some point. I'm not not pulling the rug out from underneath you right now, but at some point, power will go away and DAT one will take over. And then what you're going to see at that point is you're going to see a lot more brokers using it because it's right there in front of their face. It's mm. not within, within DAT power. So how do you find out what brokers have it? You really only find out by calling them or talking to, you know, if you're talking to a broker about a load, ask them if they're using a private network with DAT, see if you can get on it. Mm. You guys can tell if I go back to my carrier view here, let me see if I can find it easily. We added in DAT1 when you guys sign in. And again, you guys can sign in right now with your DAT credentials for, for Trucker's Edge or for Power, whatever you guys load board you use. Your email address and password will work to log into one.dat.com hmm. where you can click on private network and you can see what uh, private networks you're a part of. So it'll actually list the broker um, that uh, what broker has you listed on their private network. And and from there, you can actually choose to opt out of their private network if you really wanted to. Or if you've been opted out, you can opt in to their private network. So this is something you're going to want to. Um, uh, yeah, right here. This I was on the wrong one. I'm sorry, guys, but networks I'm in. Mm -hmm. So I can see that as a carrier, I'm in both of these uh, brokers networks. So anytime they post a private load, I will see it from them. And so, yeah, I encourage you all to log into one.dat.com, click on private network and see if you are currently in a broker's private network. Wow, that's awesome. So Bogdan has another question about the tri -hall. Uh The data shows us Kentucky, Tennessee, and they're not in good paying spot rate. If you open right now in, okay, so what is it? DAT IQ. Yeah, IQ you say. Yeah. And, and they, they based on Trihall, those rates going back from, and my model was Atlanta back to Houston, we, we're picking cities along the way where we know rates are higher. And so those five particular suggestions are higher rates than surrounding areas. It's a higher rate than just going from Houston direct or from Atlanta directly to Houston. So DATIQ or rate view, what I was just looking at, will show you what the rate currently is. But this is also showing you, you know, this is the rate that you would get. And it's better than what you would have gotten if you would have just typed in your original one. So that's what we're really comparing it to, uh, Bowden, is, is your original one that you typed in. Can we find you stuff that's better along the way without, without adding a, a bunch of miles to your trip? Yeah, he, he's one of my students. Uh, he's asked very specific questions. So let's do this. <laughs> what about Mr. Tubes? Does the market works also for box truck? Because there's yeah. only three equipment options available. No, let's talk about this. Is a huge one, you guys, and I'm glad. I'm I'm glad we got to it uh, because this is a huge one, and it's not very intuitive for carriers. So uh, I'm this. I think you're all of the folks that are printer van or a box truck, one of the smaller things, I think all of you can benefit from what I'm about to show you here. So let me mm. go back to my power screen here. And we're going to do a load search again. And when you're looking for like a sprinter van or a box truck like that, what you'll do is when you do your new search, you'll switch from any to only. And this is where it gets crazy, you guys. There is five different equipment types that you would choose. Hmm. And why is five? Because brokers, they don't post these types of smaller loads very consistently. Some post it this way, some post it that way. And you being the person looking for it, kind of have to know all the ways they're posting it so you can find them. So uh, you might want to write this one down or rewatch this later, but you're going to have five equipment types here. It's going to start with... I'll just do a alphabetical order. We will start with moving van is actually the first one you choose. Once you have moving van selected, you will choose straight box truck. That is on the list right here. Keep on scrolling down and we come across just the regular old van. Then two more. We also have van hotshot. And then lastly, van logistics. These are all the different ways that brokers will post these smaller loads. So you select them all and then you just put in your area that you're searching. And this time, van, van logistics, Michael, is, is that what you said? Van logistics. Yes. Uh, if you look at the van, what a van logistics is, it kind of looks like one of those Amazon delivery trucks. Yes. Like Sprinter yeah. van. And that's why it, it fits for this. So if I was just to do a search here for all those equipment types, and, and here's the other part. Put in your length and weight. 
you really want to put in the most length and weight that you can carry. So like a like a little one of those Amazon delivery vans, they can hold about eight feet and about 3000 pounds. That's it. And so if I was to search for all of those equipment types, restrict my length and weight, I'm going to find nothing in this case. And that, oh, what did I put in Denver? Oh, yeah, that's why. Oh, I put in Denver to Houston. I should have just did Denver to blank. That's okay. my bad. That's my bad. Here, let's do this again. And three total results in this one. And what I'm looking at here is you'll notice that um, some of them won't have a length or weight on them. Mm. Just ignore those. Anything without a length or weight, just blatantly ignore it. It's not going to be of use to you. But you can see the ones with a length and weight. These are all going to be ones that would fit on that box truck or that sprinter van. And if we did a different search somewhere else, probably get even more results, I would imagine. And just one more result there, but you can see this one. I would I would ignore it because it doesn't have the length or weight. So mm -hmm. that though all those uh, that don't list it, I would just straight up ignore those and just call on the ones that have the length and weight that you're looking for there. All right, so just doing one more search here. And, and we can also increase the radius, right? If we wanted to, like 250 or 450, something like that. Yep, I just blew it up to 450 on that yep. one. And I got some more results, but I'm again, I'm ignoring the ones without a length and weight. I'm focusing on the ones with a weight there, 1,000 pound load that can fit on my van. And those are the ones that I'm going to focus on. So those are five different equipment types. And I'm not saying there won't be more eventually as we, uh, as we figure out different ways that brokers are posting these loads. Um, that is another thing that DAT is working on here uh, in, in um, coming up is, is adding a better search experience for folks with those Sprinter vans because we understand it's, it's hard for you guys. It, it's not very intuitive when you have to remember five different equipment types. So we're looking at ways to enhance that, that search capability for you guys without having you guys have so much to remember on it. Yep, absolutely. And I have, so I remember you, uh, we've gone over the lane maker. Can we use also lane maker to pull those lanes for specifically box truck also? No, that's a, that's a good question. But lane makers is, uh, is just like our rates are, are re is restricted to, well, they know that there you go. You can do the only, you can do only there. So this is showing me all of those equipment types together. So and I am looking at broker activity. So yeah, there you go. Uh, from, for mobile, uh, from Mobile, Alabama, for those types of equipments, here's all the brokers that have been posting those lows. Like TQL has posted 3,100 of them oh, in the last month alone. Um, Circle, 1,900 in the last month alone. So yes, you can break it down, you know, uh, granularly within uh, within lane makers. Okay, awesome, awesome. So we'll take this question, and then I have a last question, then we'll wrap up this. Um, so far, so good, Michael. Thank you so much. And we have this uh, question, would restricting the length and weight work for the power only um, person? That has no, actually, for when I'm talking to someone who's searching specifically for power only, I tell them to leave the length and weight blank. When searching, just leave the length and weight blank. Uh, by putting one in there, you might not be finding some of the, the trailers that you could actually haul. So leave it blank and see everything out there that's available for power only. Awesome. So the last question I have for you, uh, Michael, is like, what are the best practices that you like maybe um, like tips and tricks? Okay. Hey, this is what I see commonly carriers use, but I highly encourage you to use this to get most out of this. Yeah. Board. Uh, you know, what, what I see is, and it's, it's going to sound so simple, post your truck, post your truck carriers. Uh, I, you know, I, I train a lot of carriers, just one-on-one -on -one training carriers. And when I ask them, when I'm showing them how to use our load board, and I ask the question, Hey, do you have a truck you'd like to post? No, no, no. I don't want to post my truck. <laughs> yeah. When I asked them, Hey, is there a load you're looking for? Oh yeah. I'm looking for a load out of Houston going to, you know, they're all up, you know, they want to do that search, but they don't want to post. And when I ask the question, why don't you post your truck? Um, usually, I mean, it's a good answer because I'm driving. I'm driving down the road. How am I supposed to answer that phone call from that broker? And how am I supposed to vet that broker or, hmm. or look up or, or look at my market conditions to see if that lane is, you know, that a market's hot market or not? How am I supposed to do all that when I'm driving down the road? So I get not wanting to post if you're driving. But here's a simple truth to posting your truck. When you post your truck, the brokers will call you. And if they call you, they need you. And if they need you, you have the upper hand in negotiation. 
That's mm. how it works. That's why they want you to po- to, to call them is they know if you call them, it's because they that you really need that load they have. Put the shoe on the other foot. You know, do you can do that to them. You post your truck, they call you and they say, yeah, I got this hot load. I'll pay you $2 a mile. I'll do over three, no less. Click. Let them call you though, because that that's the tactic that I, I I see that is not used very often by carriers. But once a carrier starts doing it, and dispatchers have the greatest you know ability to do that, right? The, you know, dispatching for a carrier that's out on the road, you can post that truck, you can negotiate that rate up higher because of it. So my mm-hmm. single my single biggest tip for you guys is post your truck, and here pretty soon with DAT one, post your truck with a rate. Hmm. That's something that carriers have been asking us for for a while. We have now given it to them. If you're using our DAT1 mobile app, it's out there right now. Anybody can download it. You can log into it with your power credentials right now. You can actually post your truck on that app and tell the brokers how much you want to make. Uh, you know, Here's my truck. I'll work for $4 a mile. And hmm. so when brokers are calling you, they already know what to expect to pay you. And so that's my biggest tips I have for carriers right now is post your truck, not only post it, but post it with the rate that you want to make. Wow. Awesome. So post your truck. It's now it's power. It's, you know, on your side. So now you have the power, you know, negotiate with, with the brokers. I think I watched uh, the, the webinar that you did back in 2018 for carriers. I watched that. Um, yeah. I think, I don't know, maybe 10 times. I was oh rewatching gosh. it, rewatching it, <laughs> taking some notes. Um, and, and you mentioned something very important when it posting the truck, right? And I've been, you know, teaching this, mm-hmm. you know, preaching this, saying to carriers as well, like, hey, you need to post your trucks. But the thing is, you have to mention the destination. I yeah. remember you saying that <laughs> no destination leads to nowhere, right? So if there's yeah. no destination, it leads to nowhere. You're not wrong. I'm very... I'm... <laughs> I'm very passionate about that. Right? Right. I very, I, I've told carriers straight up, if you don't put a destination in there, don't even post. Well, why bother? And because a lot of carriers don't understand that, uh, you know, when you put, po- when you're posting your truck, you know, you're putting in that I'm in Denver right now, I'm willing to go anywhere and you leave that blank. Well, what happens is when a broker is doing a search for a truck, that person with a, a blank destination will never come up as an exact match. Hmm. There'll always be a similar match where I might not even look at similar matches. I might even be hiding those similar matches, never paying attention to them. So carriers, when you're posting your truck, even though destination is not a required field, treat it like a required field. Hmm. Just put in, uh, if you're not familiar with our zones, we have a zone map and, and, and familiarize yourself with that. You just have to go to our little toolbox up here and go to zone map yeah, and you can see what our zones are. And we break the entire United States up into these zones, like zone nine is Washington, Oregon, California. We want you to list the zones, the areas that you are willing to go to. If you put that destination in there, then brokers that are doing a search for a truck going somewhere specifically, you will pop up as a match to them finally. So all the carriers that have been leaving that destination box open on this posting, let's not do that anymore. Let's put in the zones that you're that you're actually willing to go to mm. instead. And that's going to get more calls your way. Yeah. And also on, on the uh, full or the partial load, I think if we can pull, you know, put like both when you're searching load, I think we didn't oh, yeah. mention that. Yeah. When, when searching loads, but when you post in the trucks, you know, there, there's a option either or right? if, if it's full or the partial you're looking for. Well, Mike, you know, great stuff. Thank you for these value bombs uh, that you dropped on us. It's it's huge for us, to be honest with you. I learned, you know, a lot from you. Um, you. You know, I really have a question to our audience. Should we do like more of these collaborations, like webinars more? Maybe we can do on the Trucker's Edge. And by the way, guys, links to 30-day free trial below this video. So if you want to try out the um, power load board, the link will be below this video. Well, Michael, thank you so much. And then we'll end the live stream here. And again, guys, we'll do next Tuesday uh, another live um, stream. So I'll, 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 you know, work on the uh, topic. We'll go over the training um, as far as the loadboard training again uh, by myself and see what we can do. Michael, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Yeah, absolutely.